Hey there, I just got the latest update from Tesla. It's 2022.36.6. It has a few new items in it. I'm really excited about the stuff that's in there that's not documented by Tesla. And you can find that information on notateslaapp.com. They release all the information about updates and I use that exclusively to get the information that I want to learn about the latest update. So let's go through the update that Tesla is showing and then we'll go through the undocumented items that not a Tesla app has on their website. So let's go ahead and take a look at the first item. So the first item is the energy app. And you can see from that that learn about your vehicle's energy consumption with the updated energy app. You can now monitor the amount of energy being used while driving and parked. That's pretty cool. See how much energy is consumed by different vehicle components, driving behaviors, and environmental conditions. View the energy used in comparison to trip projection and the battery indicator. Receive personalized suggestions for using energy more efficiently. So I've had this in since the dot five. It was pretty cool. Uh, it's got a lot of features in it and uh, I will show you just quickly here, but I am gonna be putting out a full video of it uh, in the near future. So let's go ahead. So to get to it, you'll click on the three dots down here, click on energy, and let's go to drive. So in drive, it will tell you more accurately if you're being efficient by showing the green part that's just a little sliver and then the orange color saying that you're not being as efficient as you could be. Then it breaks it down into the different consumptions. So driving, your climate, uh, battery conditioning, elevation, and then everything else like stereo, uh, phone chargers, etc. And then over to the right, they'll show you some tips so in this drive specifically it actually had suggested that i stay below 110 kilometers and i would have saved 1.2 kilometers in that drive also it gives you some information about when you go up and downhill uh, just to give you a comparison you use this much going up so it says 8.1 kilometers going up and then going down i saved with the regen 6.6 .6 kilometers you can also get information about uh, the energy consumed while you're parked so right now i don't have anything but i did test this out again it's going to be in the full review and then your consumption this is a little bit more brighter or easier to look at quickly you can see that when you step on it or you're very inefficient it's bright red and then when you're doing regen it goes into the green this is much better than it was before. It stands out much better. The other part that I like is in drive. You can actually compare your current drive and your last, uh, since your last charge. Now I'm not gonna have anything in here because I just charged my car. So there's nothing there. The other part, if we go back to current drive, you can also go to trip and get for this trip. So the current trip that you're on. And you can see I was efficient, then I wasn't, and then I was, and then it gives this information. Now, one thing I wanna point out is you'll notice that it says it's in kilometers. That's because up here I'm in kilometers, but if I change this to percent, then it changes everything to percents. So if I go back to here, it would say I saved 0.2%. So that's just a quick overview of the of the new function that the energy app has but there's a lot more to come i'll show you that one for sure uh cabin overheat protection so this one you get to choose the temperature at which it activates so uh, prior to this it was just on and i'm not sure exactly what that temperature was so let's go into that so it's safety and you scroll down you can see here that it's set to on, which is with air conditioning. And now you have another one, which is approximate activation temperature. So um, 30, 35, 40 degrees Celsius or 90, 95 and 100 degrees Fahrenheit. 
and you can always open these cards to get more information. So if we do that, cabin overheat protection attempts to maintain the cabin temperature under the chosen temperature while parked for up to 12 hours. So that's a good point. I've seen a few people uh, mention on forums that their car uh, overheat protection is not working anymore. And it's because they've parked the car and then 12 hours later, it just turns it off. So that's just one thing that you just got to be aware of the 12 hour time frame. It also mentions that with no AC mode, it does consume less energy, but temperatures may exceed 40 degrees Fahrenheit or 40 degrees Celsius. It also says that this feature does not operate if the battery level is below 20%. So that's the same as sentry mode. If you're below 20%, sentry mode doesn't come on and nor does this feature. Tesla app. So view additional media player details and the ETA to a destination when a route is active from the Tesla mobile app with version uh, 4.13 and above. So what this allows you to do is pull up your app and you can uh, manipulate the media, stop, play, fast forward. You can also go and look at the route and it'll tell you you're gonna arrive at a specific time. So it's something new, I, I don't know that it's all that useful, but it's there. The next one is supercharger additional details. So the new redesigned supercharger map pop-up will now display historical site occupancy occupancy in addition to the associated charging fees when available. To view these details, tap on any supercharger pin that is in the vicinity of your vehicle. So let's go ahead and look at that. I'll just pick the uh, uh, closest one to me and I'll open up the fees. So you can see here that it's telling me there's four stalls available out of 12. It's a 250 or V3 superchargers. And then it, we're actually at the peak busy time right now. So you can see below are the associated fees. And then at the bottom, you can actually see uh, where food is, where what type of grocery stores are there, if there's a coffee shop. So if we click on coffee, it'll pop up all the different coffees like Tim Hortons, Starbucks. And if we go to food, it's gonna list all the places that you can eat. So that's pretty useful. Car left open notification. I already had this with my previous version of 28.5, I believe. And I had the latest software on my phone. So what that allowed me to do is if my door was left open, I would get a notification that my car door has been left open. So uh, in my case, my car automatically opens when I walk up to it because I have the Ingenix Boost 50 in my garage. And so what happens is, is my wife walks into the garage, she's associated with the car, it pops open, she's not aware of it. And then at some time in the future, I will get a notification that my car door is left open. So it's, it's nice to have. It's definitely a new, nice new feature. And the last documented update from Tesla is they now have support for Lithuanian. So let's go through uh, some of the updates that are not listed by Tesla but are in this latest release uh, posted on notatesla.app.com and so the first one that they have that's listed that's not there is battery heating performance. Battery heating performance has been improved when driving at highway speeds with a supercharger selected as a destination. So if you're navigating on the highway to a supercharger, it's gonna do a better job at preconditioning the battery. And I, from my understanding is it will condition a V2 supercharging destination differently than a V3. Dynamic braking lights. So if you're, if you're going above 50 kilometers an hour or 31 miles per hour and you slam on your brakes, instead of it just being a solid brake light, it's gonna flash. And then if you come to a complete stop, it's gonna turn on your hazards. So I'll insert a video here of it that I picked up off the internet. It looks like they've had it in Europe for a while. 
But anyway, just go through this again. So you slam on the brakes. As it's slowing down really fast, it's gonna flash instead of just a solid uh, brake light. And then if you come to a complete stop, it's going to go ahead and turn on your hazards. And you can manually turn that off by clicking on the hazards button or pressing on the accelerator pedal. So it's just a safety precaution for the drivers around you just to let them know that something is going on. So they have another one that says hide map details. So it says that it's not relevant to Canada, but I'm in Canada and I have it. So I'll, I'll show you that feature. So what it does is it removes all these locations on the map to clean it up a bit. And all you do is click on the pin and then it's just a map. So that's a feature they say that's not relevant uh, in Canada, but it does function. Another one, I really like this one, which is unlatched door. So in the winter, you can get freezing rain, uh, lots of snow on your door handles, and you're not able to press the button or press the door handle to open. So what they've done is they mechanically allow you to open up the door by releasing the latch electronically from your cell phone. So there's a button now that you can add that you can press on your cell phone that will pop open the door. I have that function already. Again, if I walk up to my car with an Ingenic, with my Ingenix Boost 50 module installed, as I get close to my car, my door pops open and I can just open the door without having to touch the door handle. I really like that feature. I've had it, you know, for the entire year. I love it. So this is really nice. You could do that from your cell phone too. You could be walking up and press that button if you don't want to fumble with the door handle. But really it's for the situation where the door handle's frozen and you're unable to open the door. You can mechanically still open it from the outside by pressing this button on your Tesla app. Pretty cool. Another uh, item that's not listed in the uh, release notes that was identified in dot five, so it's in the dot six as well, which is battery test in service mode. So I just completed a video. You can check it out up here, um, how to do the test and then to interpret the, the results. But I'll give you the synopsis on it. If you have to go into service mode, and then to enable this, you have to be you have to meet two requirements. One is the battery must be below 50%, and that the uh, car must be plugged into a level two charger. So the one thing I can say is I did run this test, and it all it did do is give me a percentage for my battery health. It didn't say anything else other than that. There's no progress while you're installing or running this test, so you don't know if it's completed. In fact, I've had a couple uh, subscribers run this test and they haven't appeared to complete the test, but um, yeah, it's, it's a service tool, so I wouldn't expect it to be, you know, uh, regular users using this. But anyway, it kind of just gives you the information that you get from an iPhone. If you check in your iPhone, battery health, uh, like on my iPhone, it says 99% healthy. It doesn't tell me anything other than that. It doesn't say if I've lost anything. So at this point, I don't know that it's very useful, but I did create a video on it and, and the link is up there. They also note that your mirrors can now be calibrated. So if you go into, let's see, if you go to service, and driver seat steering and mirror calibration so it calibrates everything so i just tried this this morning uh, when you click on to this button it tells you that it's going to move the seat all the way to the back it's going to lower the backrest and then it's going to bring it back up and move it forward at the same time your steering wheel is going to go up and down and in and out as well as your mirrors kind of move around it all takes about a minute to complete and then just says calibration complete. So nothing more than that, nothing fancy. So I guess if you have some calibration problems with any one of those three items, you can run this. So those are all the updates in this version 2022.36.6. Really looking forward to the next one, which is 
one, two, three, whatever it happens to be. It's got a couple new features that I'm really looking forward to. So please stay with my channel. If you really found this useful, you know, like this video, subscribe to my channel, and then ring that bell so you'll be notified when I do an update to the 40.x. Anyway, thanks for watching. I greatly appreciate it.